الكريمة قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد Ahmad. In other salawat to beautify your majlis of Aza of Aba Abdullah Al Hussein alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And in other salawat to Ona Muslim bin Aqil Ridwanullahi Ta'ala alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Media on Karbala. Today when we want to know what is happening in Karbala, Alhamdulillah it's easy. We will switch on the Shia channels. We will see what is happening and Alhamdulillah the Shia channels have done a lot. There are, mashallah, many TV channels. They broadcast live feed from Karbala. It's easy now, alhamdulillah, to know what is going on in Karbala. On the day of Arba'in, you will be able to see what is happening there. The Zuwar go, mashallah, they do their ziyara. Easily for us now to know. But when we talk about media in general, and media on Karbala specifically, we come to know that this particular topic we need to discuss on it number one on the issue of media in general and number two to understand the power of media and dangers of media and then we need to ask ourselves what does islam say about media in order for us to connect today we want to own a muslim bin aqil what did Imam Hussein alayhi salam say to Muslim bin Aqil when he sent him to verify the information from that particular area which is known as Kufa? But at the same time, when we talk about Kufa, we come to know that there are many people today, they blame you and me. We followers of Ahlul Bayt, especially when we do Latmiya. And for those who do Zanjir, people say, and they use media in a negative way. You, for example, want to search the word Shia today on the YouTube or website, the first pictures will come of those people who eat themselves. And they will tell you, these are the Shias. These are the ones who invited Imam Hussein. And they deserted him. So today, they regret and they cry and they beat up their chests. Media has done something. So how can we refute what they say? This is our discussion today, inshallah. Bi barakati salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So when we talk about media, number one, we come to know if you want to define media, there are few ways to define that, but number one, media is any channel which give information. Any channel. It could be printed media. It could be that which is digital. It's media. It could be in a form of movie media. Recently, there was this particular movie which wanted to give information about what happened in the time of Lady Fatima to Zahra, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allah, Allah, salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Fatima to Zahra, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayha, there were a lot of a pro regarding the movie Lady of Heaven. 
If you want to know, can I watch, can I what not, refer to your marja. Our maraji have said, their representative has have said, but it is a form of conveying the message. It is a media. It could be, for example, when we watch Shia TV, sometimes we see dua being recited. Being a day like today, Tuesday, dua tawassul. Thursday, dua jawshan al-kabir. Friday, for example, some ziyarat. It's a media. There are many people who have become followers of Ahlul Bayt salam through this media. You and me did not, did not go to convey the message of Ahlul Bayt salam. But by watching what is being projected from our channels, they became followers of Ahlul Bayt. It's a media. Now when we talk about media, as we said, sometimes it could be what we say news. When we say we talk about news, it is any information which we, we give, we convey to people. But at the same time, it could be a report. A report could be official, it could be non-official. But when we talk about information, as we understand, any information or any news has got two characteristics. Characteristic number one, any news could be a true or it could be a false one. And you, mashallah, you live in this particular country, you know there was a time the word fake news was used quite a lot. Because why? That is one of the characteristics of it. Rasulullah Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Allahumma sallila Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In his hadith, he has made it very clear. Laqad kathur al kathaba wasayakthuru aw wasatakthuru. Faman kathaba alayya mutaamidan faliyatabawa maqadahu minan nar. The Holy Prophet said, liars are many, are increasing, and they will be even increasing. Anyone who will falsify news, information from me, he should prepare his abode to be Jahannam. So Rasulullah knew that there will be a lot of people who will say a lot of wrong information. They will fabricate a hadith. It is a media. And he said, beware of that. Now, for us, when we look about media, we come to know that in Arabic language there are two words which are used for information or news. One is naba. The second one is khabar. Khabar for those students of Hausa or anyone who wants to do research, when you study Mantik, when they discuss about al khabar, scholars of Mantik, they define it this way in Arabic. Al-Khabaru ma yahtamilu swidqa wal kithba li dhatihi. Any information has got these two characteristics. It could give you the truth, full information, or falsehood information. Any news by its nature, without regardless of looking at who has said that, who has informed you. So don't say, what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says in the Holy Quran? No, Allah, of course, whatever we get from him is truth. Rasulullah, same thing. Normal human beings, if they give you any information, the two characteristics are there. It could be true, it could be false. And it is here we need to verify that. Amirul Mu'mineen has used the word naba in his masterpiece information. When he was coming back from the Battle of Sifin, Amirul Mu'minin entered the city of Kufa. When he went there, he went directly to the graveyard. He used to do a lot of ziyarat al kubur So when he visited there, he said, Assalamu alaikum to the people who are buried there. Assalamu ala ahli la ilaha illallah. Min ahli la ilaha illallah. Kayfa wajatum kawla la ilaha illallah. Min la ilaha illallah. Until the end, until Imam alayhi salam said, O oh people who are buried here, 
in this lonely place. You are buried in this dusty place. He said, let me give you information of what is from our world, and you can give us information from your world. He said, فَأَمَّا الدُّورُ فَقَدْ سُكِنَتْ وَأَمَّا الْأَزْوَاجُ فَقَدْ نُكِحَتْ وَأَمَّا الْأَمْوَالُ فَقَدْ قُسِمَتْ هَذَا خَبَرُ مَا عِنْدَنَا فَمَا خَبَرُ مَا عِنْدَكُمْ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ He uses the word khabar. He said, O oh, people who are buried here, in this lonely place, dusty, you are alone. Let me give you information from our world so that you can give me information from your world. Let me tell you, as for the houses you used to live in, other people are residing in. As for the wives you have left behind, or oh, husbands, they have married other people. As for the wealth, money you left behind, houses, the heirs, the heirs, they have those inheritors, they have div divided their inheritance from. So if you want to know about your houses, they are new residents. About your husbands, they have got married to other women. And the women have got married to other men. In Islam, it's allowed after a period of idda. As for the wealth, know that it has been divided according to Islamic inheritance. This is the information from our world. What is the information from you? Amirul Muminin paused. He looked at the graves and then he said to the people, if Allah would give them permission to speak, they would say, don't prepare anything except taqwa. You need to bring taqwa here. We don't have anything except that. So Amirul Muminin talks about khabar in this way. Now, when we looked at khabar, we look at the Holy Quran, we find the word naba. Khabar is there, but naba. For example, surah an naba. We have a surah in the Holy Quran. Amma yatasa'aluna anin naba il azim. So naba is news, information, great information. Great information, alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifun. They are, they have dispute about it. Is it qiyama? Is it amirul mu'minin alayhi salam? Scholars have given their opinion on this. But in Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear. And he says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, In ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in. If a fasiq comes to you with, with information, fasiq, who is fasiq? Someone who is evil. You cannot trust him. Someone who can give you information today, tomorrow he gives you in another information. Someone who is aswi. Someone who commits sins openly. He doesn't care. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says someone like him, in ja'akum fasikun binaba'in fatabayanu. If he brings you information, verify it. Scholars of tafsir of the Holy Quran, and uh, Usulul Fiqih, they say, according to this ayah, this is known as Mafhumul Muwafaqa. And there is Mafhumul Mukhalafa, meaning what? What has been informed to you directly, and there is information which is indirect. Directly, you know, this particular individual is Fasiq. He comes to you and he said, Hilal of Ramadan has been cited. Don't take that information from him. He comes and he says, tomorrow is Eid. We have seen the Hilal. Don't believe in him. Verify. Because he is Fasiq. This is Mafumul Muwafaqa. Mafumul Mukhalafa, if someone who is a mu'min doesn't lie, he says the truth, he comes and informs you about something. Take that information without verifying it. 
This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow. And that's why you and me and in normal circumstances, when you give us information, you say, for example, Salatul Maghrib is nine o'clock. We pray. Because why? You are not known as Fasik. Fasik tells you nine o'clock, verify. Because he may mislead you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Hujurat, Surah number 49, Ayah number 6. In Jaakum Fasikun binaba in Fatabayanu. Tabayanu. Verify. Check and recheck. Why? Because he may give you information and you act according to it. You cause problems to one another. And then when you will be aware of what he has said, you will blame yourselves. You will say, why didn't we, why did we listen to him? Why we didn't listen to him? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear. Now, unfortunately, sometimes we, when we are given any information, we take it face value without verifying it. And we cause a lot of trouble. Imagine how many Shias have been killed, have been persecuted because of false information. You all remember, there was a time it was easy for you to hear people talk and they say that Shias are kafir. Shias are kafir. And unfortunately, there were many people who used to take that easily. Why? Because I have heard my Maulana has told me, yeah, someone, a preacher in the mosque, he has said, and we take it like that. Shia kafir? Yes, Shia kafir. How then you meet with Shias in Mecca and Medina? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said clearly in Surah Tawbah, إِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجَسٌ فَلَا يَقْرَبُ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ بَعْدَ عَمِهِمْ هَذَا Mushrikun are najis. They should not be allowed to go near Al Kaaba or near Masjid al Haram. So now, if we know this, how, how then it becomes easy for you to accept that Shia is kafir and you go, you propagate Shia kafir and you go Hajj with them. And they pray, they read Quran, they fast in the holy month of Ramadan. How then are they kafir? It's because of false information. We take it face value and we don't verify it. There was an incident a few years ago in Iraq. In a place which is known as Spica. Iraqis know that. Young men went to study there in order for them to graduate to work with the Iraqi army. There were more than 1,000. ISIS, Daesh, whoever, according to those who participated there, they say that there were many Iraqis who were against the Shias, participated in the killing of those young men. More than 1,000 young, fine young men, Iraqis were killed, short, close range. The river was filled with blood. One particular lady works with media in Egypt. She went to see what had happened. When she reached that area, after seeing the videos which were recorded, she cried like a baby. She said, I can't believe. How was it easy to kill, to target all these young men easily like that? Why? It's because of false information. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 6? Surah Al-Hujurat. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in ja'akum fasikun binaba'in fatabayyanu. Tabayyanu was not done. And that's why those who are told that these are Shias, you can kill them. They kill them. How can you kill a human being easily like that? Another incident in Pakistan. Hazara tribes our brothers from Afghanistan. They go for ziara in Iraq, in Iran. When they come back, they take buses, their couches. When they reach back home or in the border, many a time they have been targeted and they were killed 
because just they are Shias. The media has done a dirty job to say that these are kafir. Have you seen a bus full of people has been torched and no one was allowed to come out alive? Why? Just because they are Shias. Media has done a dirty job to that level. A human being is easy able to kill another human being without any remorse. Not only that, there was a time we used to hear that Shias, when they pray, you know, when we finish our salah, after Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, what do we do? We raise our hands, yeah? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You all know some so called shuyukh wearing turbans from the other schools of thought, not Shias. They used to appear on TV saying that, you know, when the Shias pray, when they finish their salam and they say, they raise their hand three times, you know what they say? Khan al Amin, Khan al Amin, Khan al Amin. Khan al Amin, what does it mean? Amin means Jibrail. Khana, he did not do his work properly. He did khiana, treacherous. Instead of giving wahi to Amirul Mu'minin Ali, he gave wahi to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So he did khiana. He was mistrust. He did, he did he, he was not mistrusted. Jibrail. How could he miss Rasulullah and give wahi to, uh, to uh, he miss Ali and he gave wahi to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we, when we pray, astaghfirullah. It's like we cast Jibrail. Khan al Amin, Khan al Amin, Khan al Amin. And people believe in that. They say, You Shia, when you pray, after salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you raise your hand three times and you say, Jibra'il broken the promise, yeah? He did khiyana. Alhamdulillah, the same media, when you use it positively, it helps a lot. There's a particular young man, may Allah protect him. His name is Dhulfiqar al-Maghribi. For Arabs, mashallah, they have watched him. This young man from Tunisia, we don't know where he lives. He has done a very good job on YouTube in Arabic language, and there are some of his clips which have been translated into English, subtitled in English. He wears the face cover in order for him not to be known because few people, they said clearly, if we find you, we will kill you. Why? Because he exposes. He exposes the liars which is ascribed to the Shias. He took a clip from Masjid either Masjid uh, Haram of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Karbala or in Najaf somewhere. And he said about this particular issue, you people, you say one particular so-called scholar from Egypt, he was saying this, that Shias when they pray, they say Khan al-Amin, Khan al-Amin, Khan al-Amin. Dhulfikar al-Maghribi put a video and he said, okay, let us listen to what this sheikh is praying because now it's the, the time of media. Let us hear the Shias when they pray. Clearly from the mic you could hear, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So now he says, you shuyukh, if you hate Shia, that's one thing, but don't lie. Why do you lie? Why do you say something which is not there? And this particular video clip made one particular sister from one Arab country to become a Shia. Why? She said, we, we trusted our scholars, shuyukh, whatever they say, we thought it's truth. But then now, because of media, we can see clearly the falsehood of our shuyukh. Can we follow them or follow the truth? And alhamdulillah, when you use media properly, it helps. 
And that's why one particular scholar from Saudi Shia, he said clearly, these, these channels, all of them Shia channels, they have done a good job to show the reality of the followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Quran, people used to say Shia, they have their own Quran. When we watch TV every day, we hear one juzu is recited. Same Quran. Salah, we see the way Shia pray. Shahru Ramadan, you hear the Adhan at the time of breaking the fast. So there is no lie anymore. People are aware and they know what is happening. Karbala, yes. One particular individual who was not a Shi'i went for ziyara of Aba Abdullah al Hussein on the day of Arba'in and he was filmed. He came back and he said, I have never seen such a wonderful moment like Arba'in. Media is doing something good. And it is because of this, you and me, we can use all the channels in order for us to make sure we convey the right message of the madhab of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Media, when it's used in a wrong way, it can destroy a lot. Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. This is Amirul Mu'minin. Asadillahi al-Ghalib. Imam al-Mashariqi wal-Maghrib. The one who killed Marhab. And Amr ibn Abdiwud al-Amiri. He killed almost half of those people who were fighting against Rasulullah in the battle of Badr. He was the one who defeated many in the battle of Uhud. If it were not for Ali in the battle of Khandak or Ahzab, maybe Islam would be defeated. When Amr ibn Abdiwud al-Amiri came out and he said, Hal min Mubaris, is there anyone to challenge me? There was no any companion who decided to come out to fight against Ali, uh, to fight against Umar except Ali. Rasulullah said to Ali, sit down Ali. This is Amr. Ali said, no, I am Ali. I want to fight with him, Ya Rasulullah. Three times until the Holy Prophet said, Barazal imanu kullu. Ila al-kufri au ila shirki kulli. When Ali went to fight him, the Holy Prophet said today, the whole Iman has come out to, find, to fight against the whole Kufr. Ali bin Abi Talib, the one who defeated this. Amri bin Abdiwud al-Amiri. You know what happened? Sahabas yeah, were with Rasulullah. When they saw Amri, they were hesitant to come out. And he was going right and left and he said clearly, you Muslims, you say when you die, you become shaheed, you go to paradise. Come on. I want to send you to paradise. You fight with me, I kill you, you go to paradise. No one wanted to come out except Ali. This Ali, who has done a lot of service for the sake of Islam, the one who used to enter masjid before anyone, and he used to come out of the masjid after everyone has left the masjid. He was zinatul mihrabi wal mimbar. When he sits or he stands to pray on mihrab, the mihrab becomes beautiful because of Amirul Mu'mineen. When he sits on mimbar, Ali gives speech. The mimbar likes for Ali to sit there. You know what happened because of media? When Amirul Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam was martyred, people were asking this silly, silly question. Forgive me for my language. Silly question. Ali was killed in masjid. Yes. What was he doing in a masjid? They were told Ali was praying. Ali used to pray. We thought Ali doesn't pray. Can you imagine media when it's used negatively? Muawiyah and the enemies of Ali, they gave false information that Ali doesn't pray. If Ali doesn't pray, after Rasulullah, who else would pray? So today when you find other people are fighting against you as followers of Ahlul Bayt, know that it is because of that media which was started to portray bad image of the followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. 
when we talk about media, we need to be aware. We need to refute whatever is done by the enemies of Islam, enemies of Madhab of Ahlul Bayt salam, in order for us to be aware of the dangers. And today, unfortunately, especially young people, men and women, you need to be very careful. When you go to search the internet, not every site which you, you search is the correct website. You need to verify information. And without checking it with the scholars, there is a danger for you to take everything and you think that this is the Islam which we need to follow. And it is because of this, unfortunately, there are many enemies who know, especially our young people, when they see La ilaha illallah, they see Bismillah, they see Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, they think this is a website which you can take information from. You need to be aware that the enemies are praying, especially on you, young men and women, be careful about that. Now, today we need to ask a question. Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Why did he send Muslim bin Aqil to the city of Kufa? Why? Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam was in Makkah. Yeah, we said Rajab, he left Medina. He went to Makkah. He was there in the month of Sha'aban. He was there in the month of Ramadan. He was there in the month of Shawwal. He was there in the month of Dhul Qa'da. He was there in the month of Dhul Hajj. Makkah sent a point for Muslims. People come for Umrah and then Hajj. Easy to exchange information. Abba Abdullah al Hussein, while he's in Makkah, he receives letters from people of Kufa. They say, Oh, grandson of Rasulullah, come to us. We will give you our allegiance. The oath of allegiance will give it to you. Bay'a. We will support you. And you will be our leader. You're already our leader, but we want you to come here to Kufa. Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam said, Okay, let me verify more. Letter one, two, one thousand, ten thousand, until twelve thousand letters. Some scholars say eighteen thousand letters, not emails. These are letters. Eighteen thousand, twelve thousand. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, Now I don't have any excuse. I have to go. But before I go, let me send my ambassador, Muslim bin Aqil. Go there to verify the information. Imam Hussein didn't say this one or the letters are from people who are fasik. No. I want to verify the situation. So he sent Muslim bin Aqil with, with his letter. Now there are many questions here to ask. Why Kufa? Why not Egypt? Why not Sham, Syria? Why not any other place except Kufa? The reason scholars say, in order for you to understand the importance of Kufa, know that Kufa was an important place even before Islam, which we know it now. When you go to Kufa for Ziyara, especially Masjid al-Kufa, there are places which are known as Maqam. Maqam of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Maqam of Jibra'il, Maqam of Nuh. They say here, these are the places where they used to pray. So it was so important place. Rasulullah, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. When he was going for Isra and Mi'raj, Jibra'il show him Kufa, that Masjid al-Kufa. And he prayed there. So that's why we have Maqam of Rasulullah. Rasulullah has given importance to this particular masjid. There are three masajid when you pray, the thawab is more than any other masjid. Masjidul Haram, Masjidul Nabawi, Masjidul Haram, Makkah, where there is Al-Kaaba. Masjidul Nabawi, Medina, 
the mosque of the holy prophet masjid al kufa these three unfortunately there is information which has been distorted our brothers who are not followers of ahlul bayt alayhim salam have been told la tushaddu ar rihalu you cannot make a journey or travel except to three masajid masjidul haram masjidul nabawi and masjidul aqsa three masajid so that's why they don't go to kufa you don't meet with them hadith which has been given to them doesn't mention kufa from the mother of ahlul bayt alayhim salam masjid kufa al kufa is one of the holiest sites for muslims now as we understand imam hussein alayhi salam receives the letter from the people of kufa he says now muslim you have to go this is a place where not only that in the year 15th ah or 17th ah at the khilaf of umar ibn al-khattab he sent saad Sa 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 bin abi waqas for him to lead the muslim army for that which is known as expansion expansion for two heart whether it's right or not our scholars have ob an observation on that he goes there he makes the city he starts the city soldiers many of them stay in that particular which is known as kufa the city becomes like what we call today multicultural city you have majority arabs and then number two iranians and then you have yemenis you have other people from other parts of the world they all gather they live in the city of kufa city of kufa when amirul mu'minin was the imam and khalifa he moved the islamic government central point to be in kufa why because of economic reasons madina was not as strong economically like kufa and also it was easy for him to go wherever he wanted amirul mu'minin made it to be so there were many scholars in kufa today when for example you want to discuss about arabic language in terms of grammar you know that there are two major opinions opinion of the scholars of kufa and opinion of those scholars of basra al basriyun wal kufiyun kufa is very important there there were many scholars there many sahabas used to live there imam abi abdullah al hussein alayhi salam knew that if i go to kufa it will be easy for people around the islamic world to understand my revolution and my mission he decided muslim you go so muslim goes to the city of kufa he is welcomed by many people muslims becomes like a superstar why because he is the representative of the grandson of rasulullah hussein bin ali bin abi talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Muslim bin Aqil because he has been sent by Aba Abdullah al Hussein. He leads salah. Masjid is full. Everyone wants to pray behind this particular individual. Not only that he's a scholar. Not only that he's from Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. But also he is one of the heroes from the family of Rasulullah. Do you know that Muslim bin Aqil participated in few battles, including Sifin, where he defeated few people there? Muslim bin Aqil is welcomed, and people are ready to give the bay'ah. They come to him. He, uh, he is at the house of Hani bin Urwa. Many people visit him. All of a sudden, Yazid receives information that Muslim is changing the understanding of people that we are not supposed to be the leaders but Aba Abdullah al Hussein. It was here he decides to change the governor of Kufa and he decides to bring Ubaidillah bin Ziyad. We hear the name Ubaidillah bin Ziyad. Ubaidillah bin Ziyad was the son of Ziyad bin Abihi. These two individuals, Ziyad bin Abihi, Historians say his father is not known. And that's why when you look at the books of history, he's known as Ziyad bin Abihi. 
Ziyad, son of his father. Who is his father? It's not known. But some say the father was Abu Sufyan. But because there was a wrong inform uh, relationship, that's why he didn't name him after him. He said Ziyad bin Abihi. Ziyad bin Abi was a soldier, very rough. His son, Ubaidillah bin Ziyad, very rough. They were used like police, riot police, to come and come people, and they did not worry to kill people for wrong reasons. Ubaidillah bin Ziyad became the governor of Al-Kufa. He starts psychological war, psychological warfare, targeting the chiefs of the tribes in Kufa. Threats. If you are not going to desert Muslims, we are going to kill the whole of your tribe. You are the chief. Not only that, Ubaidillah bin Ziyad targets some of the heads of the tribes who supported Muslim bin Aqil. He captures them, imprisoned them, some of them were killed. Some of them were jailed like Mukhtar al-Thaqafi, put in prison. Later on, Mukhtar, as we understand, he came to avenge, put him in prison. Now the position came, the time that Muslim bin Aqil, the one who was welcomed by the people in the streets of Kufa, he enters the masjid one day to lead salah. He finishes assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Looks behind, there is nobody who was praying with him. He is deserted. He's alone. Where can he go? He thinks, now what can I do? He goes wandering in the streets of Kufa. No one wants to open the door for him. This reminds you and me about what happened to Nabiullah Musa alayhi salam. There was a time Nabiullah Musa could not find a shelter and he had to run away from the city where he used to live in Egypt. <coughs> Muslim bin Aqil finds a place where can I stay? He doesn't have a place until he goes outside the city he find a house of this particular lady by the name Tawa, a believer, trusts Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, also lover. She wants to die for the sake of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Here, let us stop a little bit. Sometimes, brothers, when the sisters, your sisters, your wives, your mothers want to know more about Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam to be loyal, prepare the ground. If they enter into the faith, they enter wholeheartedly. They raise the children that way. Tawa, a woman, says, who are you? He says, I'm a Muslim. Who, which Muslim? Muslim bin Aqil. I am Safir of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. What do you want, Muslim? He says, I don't have any place to go. Allow me to enter your house. The lady thinks, but my husband is not here. What can I do? This is darura. This is a, an emergency. I will allow Muslim to come. Fikhu darura. Scholars say, when there is darura, there is emergency, Something which was haram may be allowed to be halal. Yes, a woman cannot stay in a house with a man alone. But in terms of dangers, someone is in danger. There's a woman alone. She allowed him to come in because why? He was in a danger. Tawa allows Muslim, Muslim enters the house. Tawa had this particular young boy who was not fond with Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. Money was spent. Spies were given money to say where Muslim is. This particular young man looks at the movement at night, mother going from one room to another to give something, carry something, water, food, 
Then she, he becomes suspicious. Then he asks the mother, mother, who is here? Mother gives uh, an answer just to calm him down. He's not satisfied. Until the mother said, my son, I will tell you, but I want you to promise me that you will never say this to anyone. He says, no problem. Muslim is in our house. That young man was bought by the money of Obaidillah bin Ziyad. He goes to inform the soldiers that Muslim is in our house. According to narration, when Ubaidillah bin Ziyad heard this, he said, we know Muslim. He's a hero. He participated in the battle of Sifin. We can't send only five or ten people. Send 70 good soldiers to fight against him. 70 soldiers were sent. Muslim was called to come out for a battle, for a combat. He came out. He said to Lady Tawa, sorry, my, my sister, I have to, to go out to protect myself. He went and he fought. Those 70, most of them were injured or killed. They sent information, we need more. A big number was sent. Muslim started fighting until he was given a promise, oh Muslim, stop. We will not kill you, we will not injure you. We will give you peace, but stop fighting. Muslim verified it, and he thought that it was a true promise. He said, okay, he stopped, they captured him. They took him to Ubaidullah bin Ziyad. When Ubaidullah bin Ziyad saw him, he was so happy. And he said, clearly, I'm going to finish you, I'm going to kill you. Muslim bin Akil said, please don't do that. I have been sent by the grandson of Rasulullah. He talks to him, he doesn't listen. He gives order, go and finish Muslim. Muslim looks around, he sees Umar bin Sa'd. Umar bin Sa'd was there. He said to Umar bin Sa'd, oh Umar, you are a Qurayshi. You understand our language. I want you, please, carry my will. I know I'll be killed, but do three things for me. Number one, send a letter to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Inform him that he should not come to the city of Kufa. Things have changed. Number two, Mus oh, Umar bin Saad, I know I'll be killed. But after my killing, please make sure you cover my body with kafan and then bury me. Number three, I took some money from someone. I want you to sell whatever I have for you to pay back the debt. Omar bin Saad says, no problem, we will do that. Then Ubaidillah bin Ziyad says to the soldiers, take him to the rooftop, behead him. They took Muslim. When Muslim was there, he knew that now my time has come. They will kill me. He said to the one who was about to behead him, O oh Abdullah, O oh servant of Allah, you are a Muslim. Allow me to pray two rakats of salah. This is my final moment. He said, okay, go and pray. I don't know about you and me, brothers. And sisters, when we come to our final moment, it, will it be easy for us to pray at least two rakats like Muslim did? Muslim bin Akil prays two rakats. And after he finishes, he stands and he said, please let me say final words. He faces towards Makkah. He said, As-salamu alayka ya Aba Abdillah. As-salamu alayka ya Aba Abdillah. This is the last, last salam. Narration says that Aba Abdullah, where he was in that particular moment, he heard this voice of As-salamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Imam Hussein alayhi salam answered the salam and he said wa alayka salam ya muslim when we go for the ziyara when we say salam to aba abdullah know for sure your salam is heard by aba abdullah al hussein alayhi salam when muslim finished finished to say salam 
the one who was there to behead him. He came and hit him so hard first time he couldn't separate the head from the body. But the second time he hit him so hard so that the head rolled in one side and the body the other side. And then they pushed the body of Muslim from the rooftop. They dragged the body of Muslim in the streets of Kufa in Nalillah. And then they took the head of Muslim bin Aqil and Hani bin Urwa. They sent them to Mal'un Yazid. Oh, Mu'mineen, I want you to tell me. When Aba Abdullah al Hussein entered the city of Kufa as a head after he was beheaded, and all the other heads were made to enter the city of Kufa, the wife of Muslim bin Aqil, can you tell me how was the difficult for this particular lady to enter the city while she knew that here Muslim bin Aqil was beheaded? The history is telling us that there were two sons of Muslim who came with him and these two sons they couldn't find a shelter they were going from one particular to another until they entered a one particular house and then the owner when he came to know that Ubaidillah bin Ziyad has given a lot of money for the sons to be given back whether they are alive or dead he decided to behead even those two sons of muslim inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un wa sayalamu alladhina zalamu ala muhammadin ayya munqalabin yanqalibun wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliy al-azim we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi barakat muslim ya allah bless this gathering Ya Allah, we ask you to fulfill our hajat. Ya Allah, bi barakat Muslim bin Aqil, we ask you to cure all the marir. Ya Allah, bi barakat Muslim bin Aqil, we ask you, Ya Allah, to make us to stand firm on sirat of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. Protect our children, make them to follow the footsteps of the righteous servants of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. اللهم ارزقنا زيارة الحسين في الدنيا وشفاعته في الآخرة. Oh Allah, allow us to go for the ziyara of Abu Abdullah and allow us to attend the shafa'a of Abu Abdullah. Ya Allah, we ask you to make the zuwar of Abu Abdullah in this Muharram and Arba'een their ziyara to be accepted. برحمةك يا أرحم الراحمين and for those brothers and sisters who are not well. Let us recite Amma Yujibul Muqtarra five times together, please. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amma Yujibul Muqtarra Ida Daahu Wa Yakshifu Su. Amma Yujibul Muqtarra Ida Daahu Wa Yakshifu Su. أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله اللهم اكشف عنا السوء بما شئت وكيف شئت إنك على ما تشاء قدير اللهم شاف كل مريض اللهم شاف كل مريض اللهم شاف كل مريض برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد الله صل على محمد Unfortunately, today, because of time, we don't have any Latmiya, inshallah, next time.
صل على محمد وآل محمد